Hello, this is Vicki Gervickis at the Greater Gainesville Chamber, and we are delighted to welcome Cynthia Chestnut today, and she is one of the candidates for the upcoming City Commission special election, which will be held on November 16th. And so we're going to get to know her a little bit better and ask her a few questions. Welcome, Cynthia. Thank you. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. We're glad to have you. So um, why don't you start by giving an opening statement? Tell us a little bit about, uh, I think we all know you a little better than maybe some, but tell us a little bit about uh, what brings you here today. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Vicki. I decided to come out of retirement because the urgency of the dysfunction on the current city commission demanded it. The city commission requires the experience, wisdom, leadership, humility, and respect of the public that I have developed as a veteran public servant over the past 30 years. Furthermore, I feel indebted to the citizens of Gainesville for giving me the opportunity to serve them and to serve in so many varied positions. City Commission, 1987, Mayor, 1990, Florida Legislature, 1990 to 2000, and the County Commission for one term. In 2007, Gainesville was recognized as the number one city in the U.S. to live by, US, by Money Magazine. But this commission has us looking like a joke with this unnecessary dysfunction. Four of six constitutional officers at the city quit. The mayor then asked a fifth officer, the GRU manager, to step down and he refused. And a city commissioner resigned. Now, one of the, one of the uh, charter officers has rescinded her resignation. So, so um, that was very good. I am, um, it's just, we're at a point, it is just unbelievable, but we need to restore the confidence of the public and city government that we uh, know how to run a government in Gainesville, it can be effective. We need to restore the confidence of the public and the city commission. And uh, for the city commission to realize in order to restore that confidence, they have to listen, listen to the citizens and restore the confidence of the employees in the commission. Uh, I think employee morale is at a, is at a low tide um, and people are just not feeling a part of the system. They don't feel valued. We've got to change that. And most of all though, most of all, our citizens are feeling uh, affected because they have no input into government and that input is not being recognized. It's not being sought. And that is not the Gainesville that I know. So I, I think you'll find uh, that you'll be able to expand on those points a oh, little good. Bit with our questions. So, and Very good. No, none of the candidates saw the questions ahead of time, just Thank to you. make that clear. <laughs> All right. Well, the first question then is what do you perceive are the three most important concerns in Gainesville right now? Okay. Uh, number one is uh, neighborhood preservation. And by that, when you stop and you think of a neighborhood, which is the uh, uh, the backbone of a city, the backbone it's the backbone of America, neighborhoods. Um, for me, as a baby boomer and as other baby boomers, a house will be the single most uh, uh, expensive or valued asset we have. And you look at that house, you look at that home as something you're going to leave as a legacy to your children, or uh, something that you're going to use in retirement. Well, the neighborhoods are being impacted and they're being impacted with, quote, uh, upfill, infill, density. And uh, uh, lots of words are being thrown around. And at, in the meantime, uh, neighborhoods are suffering. We look at uh, 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 Porter's neighborhood, the Pleasant Street neighborhood that, have suffering, that are suffering from gentrification. Black people are wondering what's next? What traditionally black neighborhood will the city uh, come in with the idea of imposing density? Now, just last week, we read the story on Suburban Heights and where the, uh, uh, the developer from, from Atlanta had asked for a Starbucks, but the staff told him that he could put in a six story, 220 unit uh, facility in that neighborhood. 
on that corner uh, where St. Michael's Church was. Well, my concern there and, and the concern in talking to the neighbors in that, uh, in that neighborhood is with the traffic congestion, the noise, uh, the possible littering, but just it just disturbs the, the tranquility of their neighborhood, disturbs it. Now, I support density, but I believe density should be in the inner city, not in my, not in my backyard, mm -hmm. <laughs> not in my neighborhood. So yes, density, uh, because I want to see the businesses thrive. I want to see businesses come to Gainesville. I want to see them develop, um, but not this way. So I think that we, you know, we, we uh, uh, September 2020, I believe they passed uh, accessory dwellings. And that will allow what some people call mother-in-law suites, one to two, but it allows two uh, right in your own, next to your house. That I think is uh, something that was passed in the late at night. We need to go back and have more citizen input and listen to people, go out into the neighborhoods and listen to them. Let's evaluate uh, how many people have applied for accessory dwellings. And we don't know that. So I, I, I think that that is one area. My other area is, is of concern, Vicki, is with violence. Uh, a few weeks ago, every weekend, we were hearing of a shooting here and a shooting there. And um, everybody was wondering, is this really Gainesville, Florida? Um, so I am happy to report uh, that the police chief and uh, the sheriff, but the police chief now has, I think, a very good plan uh, to try to address the issue. And that is one in bringing back the neighborhood crime watch, crime watches. And I think he's also going to have, a, uh, this one I was not a familiar with, with the business crime watch, which I think is an excellent idea. Uh, he also will have what he's calling violence interrupters. And these are people who are people from the neighborhood. And that's important people who are from the neighborhood, who live in the neighborhood, and who speak the language of the neighborhood, working with their citizens. Uh, and uh, then he has a, a neighborhood support unit that he's going to bring. I think that that too will be great in, in, in trying to uh, have a communication with citizens and to sort of uh, look at squelching squelching this before it gets out of hand. I think, I think what most importantly, uh, intervention, intervention and uh, 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 preservation are important. Mm -hmm. um, so. Okay, all right, well, let's go. That'll give you, uh, it, it's the perfect segue again into our next question, okay. which is, um, so what would be your top priorities and projects are, if you are elected? My, my top priority will be uh, restoring the confidence of the citizens and government. And in order to do that, uh, I think in order to get the business community, the neighborhoods, uh, Joe Lunchback and Jane Doe involved, we have to welcome people into the city hall. They don't feel welcome now. Uh, a few years ago when I served on the commission, we had a, a lot of, a number of advisory boards. It was great citizen engagement. That is one thing that just endeared me to Gainesville because you, you, you could have a, an expert from the university as a free consultant work with people from the neighborhood in solving problems. We don't have that now. Uh, people don't feel a part of government. They don't feel like, uh, like the door is open for them to come in. That would be something that I want to work on first and for, foremost. And in doing that, uh, Vicki, then we're able to get into the neighborhoods. We're able to get into the neighborhoods and to hear what people want. I would like to see us hold uh, town hall meetings. Uh, years ago, uh, we had, uh, I think John Mills brought this to us, it was the vision, uh, vision, I think it was called Vision 2020, uh, Vision 2000. But at any rate, it was the coming together of the community to make goals and objectives that we wanted to achieve. And so I think that uh, that's something that we need to go back uh, and look at. Um, so that will be my top priority. My second priority will be again, working on the violence, violence and, and trying to uh, 
make sure that we eradicate and prevent. Very good. Okay, well now this third question you touched on in your opening and I'm gonna give you another okay. opportunity to address it a little bit more. <laughs> okay. The city of Gainesville has experienced unusually high turnover, both uh, on the commission itself and within the staff. What skills do you bring to the table uh, with this office that would help make a difference there? Okay, well, I think, uh, first of all, uh, my experience, uh, my, my professional preparation, my doctorate is in public administration. Um, but I think what needs to happen at City Hall is that we need to have role clarifications, role clarifications. The, uh, the mayor is not the city manager and the city manager is not the mayor, uh, nor is the mayor a strong mayor. We don't have a strong mayor form of government here. And I think that uh, the charter says that the daily operation of the city lies with the city manager. So we need to hire a very good professionally, academically trained uh, city manager, someone with the experience who can run the day-to-day -day operation and, uh, when, when hiring, I want to see us hire the best recruiting firm we can find, not a second rate recruiting firm, uh, because we've had some, we've had some uh, unfortunate incidents to happen just recently. So we need to look very closely at who we hire and what kind of person is really going to fit in, fit in with, with, with the Gainesville. But I want to see the charter implemented. I had the experience, uh, the opportunity to serve on the Charter Review Commission. And that's something that we made very clear that there is a separation of roles. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. All right, our next question is, um, unfortunately, COVID-19 continues to present issues within our community and our state. What actions do you think we need to take moving forward? Good question. Well, I, I um, wish I didn't have to ask it. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Well, I think that we need to take uh, the safety precautions that we can take. Um, uh, uh, that is that is absolutely necessary. I listen to um, the the view, and every day, uh, Whoopi War Whoopi says, "Wash your hands, social distance, mm -hmm. wear your mask." Mm -hmm. Those are three things that I think we're going to have to do as we uh, live through this, this period. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I think the city had a situation with the um, first responders uh, and uh, mandating that they get the, the vaccine. I would have taken a carrot and stick approach and that I would have first involved uh, uh, the first responders, police and fire, brought them in and let them help develop the remedy or develop what it is you wanted to do. And I think that I've found that that works most effectively when people feel like they have a voice in their own destiny, a voice in trying to, uh, trying to address issues. I would have done that. And then next I would have said, well, uh, if you still don't want the vaccine, then we would offer the monetary incentive, which the city offered. It just wasn't very well publicized for some reason. Um, and we would keep we would keep going until then. We would require a, a testing, weekly testing, the same as New York did, weekly testing, just to just to to be certain. Um, I think that is it is important that people receive the vaccine. I think it's important that they wear a mask and it is important that they wash their hands and that they socially distance. And so those are the things that I think that uh, each one of us can be an army of one to do that. And we need to do it for our children as well. Very good. Okay, and so the last question is, and this one's uh, you know the, the, a good wrap up, I think. Why should members of the business community support you? Uh, first, because I'm going to listen to them. Uh, uh, my family has uh, been in business as a business that has been open for about 105 years, uh, a funeral home. And that is rapidly changing as the uh, each day because more and more is being required of us and, and, and the expectations for people are, are, are changing. How we communicate with them, uh, everything. So I would, 
I will be a good listener. Uh, I like to listen to what people have to say. I am also a great collaborator. So I will call people together to uh, see how we can solve a problem. I, I had the opportunity uh, to serve on the Chamber's Public Policy Committee, uh, which I enjoyed very much. And, uh, and there again, we, we were listening to people in government, listening to people, business, business folk. And um, I think that uh, that, is, that is my skill. I am a collaborator, I'm a bridge builder, and I like to listen. All right, terrific. Um, so now we have a couple uh, final minutes where you can bring us home and tell us anything else you wanted to tell us. If there was anything I didn't ask you that you wanted to bring out, however you'd like to wrap up, this is your chance. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, I'd like to say that when, uh, again, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, during my, uh, my career, uh, I have always been results oriented. Uh, when I went to Tallahassee, I saw the problems, uh, I chaired the education committee and I set about the business of trying to address those issues. One was lottery money to fund Bright Future Scholarship for all Florida's children. And so many have, have benefited from that. Seat belts on school buses. If, you, if your child is fastening a seat belt today, I was the sponsor of that bill in the house. Charlie Crist mm -hmm. was the sponsor in the Senate, in the Senate. And that we we worked on that together. I got it passed. When I came home and I saw that uh, people were going to work every day but didn't have health care, I was on the county commission, looked at the issue, and uh, then came back to the commission with choices. And choices is health care for the working uninsured, working uninsured, and fourteen thousand workers in Gainesville benefited from that uh, from that plan. It was really a precursor to Obamacare, our, the affordable health care plan. Um, and that's something that I'm very proud of, that we were able to do that. And then funding for the Shands Eastside Clinic on Waldo Road. I, I worked to get that done and to bring it home. So I would say that um, I, I, I am a seasoned uh, politician. I have the experience. I have the wisdom. And I am a listener. And in the words of an old Negro spiritual, I would say, let the work I've done speak for me. Thank you very much.